guys. It's um, Quilty here from um, the Rustic Pet. Um, today we're in Newcastle um, and we're at the, um, the in-laws. So it's a nice big yard as you can see. We've got beautiful peacocks. Um, today I'm going to find, I believe it's some white mahogany that's hidden up the back here. Um, and we're going to try and make it into a few wine racks. So um, stay tuned and I'll get, take you on a bit of an adventure of making some um, upcycled furniture. Over the catch. Alright, this is old, uh, a white mahogany fence post. So I'm going to try and turn them into a um, rustic looking wine rack. So watch the rest of the video and I'll, I'll show you how this pans out. Alright, just another look at them. As you can see, old as heck. Old, uh, yard posts made of white mahogany and uh, hopefully there's no spiders in any of these big old holes all right and as you can see here guys i was just moving this one around and uh got a little surprise visitor right here it's quite hard to see but it's a welcome to australia eh? oh and he's off <laughs> uh, something else for me to touch later hey Good boy, Alfie. Alright guys, I'm just going to um, trim the ends off this um, bit of white mahogany. The, uh, this is the drama guys when you're using older timber um, can you uh, I think you can see in there there's a big old pin it's the same color as the timber but in here when I hit it with the chainsaw probably just rooted about three or four of the teeth but um yeah the th it's the problem with working old 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 fence posts and timber there's a lot of nails and screws all hidden through it this is another piece <laughs> So side by side they're going to lean, as I said, ever so slightly back. One might just do the, the wine bottle necks, so just the, uh, I think it's about a 32 mil hole, and the other one. Alright, we're going to um, touch up the, um, the fence post now with a bit of 40 grit on a flapper disc. This is the easiest way I've found to um, clean up large areas that are like quite dirty, so enjoy. Alright, uh, now you can see that we've got it down to a, a really, really rough finish, but uh, a lot more impressive than where it was a couple of minutes ago. So this one's still got the mould and the, uh, <coughs> the, the the wilderness living in it really, but as you can see it's going to um, tidy out. It's going to be a really light timber, a lot of yellow through it. Um,
All right, guys, you can see here this uh, white mahogany has come up really nice. Um, so I've gone down as far as 120 grit on this um, with the flapper disc, so it's quite smooth now like compared to all this type of dirt. Um, it's cleaned up really nice. Now, I'm not going to remove all these imperfections and all these little divots and uh, nice little bits of um, live edge because of what I want, um, if I do go down that far, it's just going to look like a really boring yellow timber. Um, so I'm going to try and keep some of this character um, that you can see throughout the holes, all that stuff. Ooh, oh, we got in there. Be something else in there like a funnel web. Try not to stick my fingers in there. <coughs> but um, yeah, this type of character I'm going to try and keep throughout. Um, well, now moving on to the sanding part. So yeah, once again, start back at about 80 to 100 grit, and then we're going to um, sand it back with the um, rotary sander. So if you didn't hear before, what I'm doing is pretty much getting in here with a bit of a brush. I can either put a wire wheel in here or um, just give it a light brush. A lot of this stuff is just dirt. It's not, um, it's nothing serious. It's not like a um, stain or paint or anything or sap. It's literally just a bit of dirt from the backyard. And if you're wondering why I'm only using like a toothbrush and a brush, I'm uh, not in my shed. I'm actually on holiday in Newcastle. So for the family, I'm just using what I've got. Just thought I'd uh, entertain myself, you know. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is, as I said, I want a bit of the character to come through. Alright, so that's after I've um, given it the brush. I've got most of the dirt out of these holes, and I think I've got most of the spiders out of these holes. Ugh, daunting. Yes. Alright, we'll move on to the sander now. Alright, I've got the, uh, well, I literally just bought this to um, do this job, so, yep, looking for that sponsorship, Ryobi. I'm here. Um, but now we're going to use the Ryobi Orbital today, so the, uh, Straight side on the 80, and you'll um, see what I mean. There'll still be plenty of stuff to do. Alright, so Alright, you can start to see where the, the angle I'm going here. Alright, so this will all be polished up, and as I said, I'm going to punch big old holes through it. Um, this base at the moment is just one of the ones I picked up from Bunnings. Alright, I'm just going to um, mark. Just, oh, there he is, I like. Just getting some nice sun with me. Alright, so this is going to be the front. So this, this bit here is the front. It's going to be the uh, edge that you point out to somebody. Um, so all I'm doing is going, oh, what is it? About 150 from this corner up, from this corner up. Now I don't measure anything in particular like a set way. I just mark things how I like them by eye. And it's pretty much where I want things to go. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. <clears throat> sometimes that don't make sense. But it's fine. So I'm just... and it might not make sense to what I've just said. 
But all I'm doing is trying to make sure that I don't cross over with my um, bore here and make multiple holes throughout the um, piece of wood. As you can see, little Alpha's decided to um, enjoy the uh, grass right underneath where I'm drilling. Hey Alf, what you doing? Just resting. Alright, so I've marked one, which is here. Alright guys, I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, but this is the, the, the design, the slash look. This was my plan B design with the um, wine barrel rack, uh, wine bottle rack. Um, the other idea was to put circular soles, so just giant holes through the side all the way through where the bottle would slide in. I can't do that because I just don't have the tooling here to do that type of thing today. So what I've done is um, gone with the simple wine bottle neck holder. Um, which I think still looks mint. Um, still got a bit of work to do to clean up the holes and the post itself. Um, but yeah, too many holes through the side, what I think will happen is pieces will break off. Um, I'll punch a hole through here, and it'll knock this side off, because it's um, just the way the timber's going at the moment. But I'll, um, I'll put it back down, I'll do a final sand, and then I might wash it, and then tomorrow we'll, um, we'll see how she goes with a, uh, a, light, a, light, a light polish. Um, but um, yeah, it's definitely turning out a lot better than I thought. Alright guys, it is uh, day two on the wine uh, bottle rack here. Um, I've had to think, and um, what I'm going to do is I am going to put some more holes, wine rack holes here. Um, the original plan wasn't to put any more through because it would, um, I, was, I was worried it would punch the pieces out. Each, each piece here might break off because of the way of the grain of the wood going down, so it might break really large pieces off. I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try and put a wine bottle here, wine bottle here maybe one a bit lower. We'll, um, we'll see what room, because I do have holes in the side, so I've got to be careful with those as well. Um, and hopefully we can make it more of a Christmas wine bottle tree. Um, I've got Alfie helping me today, so I'm going to get stuck straight in. So this is what I was um, a bit worried about. Uh, Whilst I'm pushing the drill bit through, these big pieces breaking off as it's coming through. Um, it is what it is, but um, yeah, that's, that was one of the reasons I didn't want to push it through because of the run of the um, direction of the grain. But um, I'll see if I can fix this up. Alright, this is where it's, um, it's definitely got a bit more trickier here. Got various holes, as I said, I've got the... Uh, the old wire holes. So I'm going to try and go maybe here. I might punch through this hole as I come through, but I'll um, we'll give it a go. See so if we can get these other ones done in. And now because I've got multiple holes here, um, I've got a lot of, like they're coming through the front, here, so there, there, here, there, here. Um, so this one's going to go right here. It's going to be tricky, but um, in theory if I can get it without punching through the hole here, we should be good. There we are, we'll be good. Yeah. Thanks for helping. Very helpful. Line that up here. Oh. Oh, yep. All 
Now guys, we've moved on to the 240. Just gonna um, do the last sand now and then we'll um, polish. Alright, up to the pointy end now, I'm just going to pin the bottom of this to our new, uh, our new little base. Alright, so this is where we're at. It's got a nice little base on it. Half as relaxing as always in the dust. Loves a good dust, dust dog. So yeah, as you can see, I'll move it around. There's holes all running down the sides now. On each side. And what we're going to do now is put a light oil over it and then I'll polish it. Alright. I am now going to just get all the dust, the last little bit with the really fine dust that's in all these little holes out. I usually use a um, paintbrush, so as you can see here, you just, there'll be plenty of it. Alright guys, this is the hardest part. What you need to do is get yourself a cheeky little dinosaur cup. Um, fill it with uh, olive oil, that's what we use in taking. You can use linseed, grapeseed, whatever oil you want. Furniture oil, I don't care. I am in a Greek household, so Popple recommended that we use a bit of olive oil to uh, tidy up the timber. So, we're going to see what happens. we run a bit of this delicious food grade olive oil over this timber. Just remember I'm not a how-to how to video. If you don't like the way I do stuff. Alright. So that is the olive oil. Not finished yet, but I thought I'd uh, let you have a little sneak peek. Alright guys, there is one completed rustic wine bottle rack. It came up a lot tidier than I was expecting from an old fence post. So, I'm actually blown away by that. Hey guys, it's um, Quilty here from the Rustic Pet. Um, 
hope you're happy with the video. Um, I'm really happy on the way this turned out. Old fence post into a rustic wine bottle rack is, um, I think it's amazing. Um, this tiger pattern has come through, it's outstanding. But um, if you like. Oh. Sorry guys, didn't see you there. Just enjoying a nice little drink. Um, as you can see here, this is the um, the wine bottle rack holding wine bottles. Um, it's doing a really good job. It's sturdy. They're not going to fall out. They're on a they're definitely not on a massive angle, but they're on enough to keep them like wedged into each one of the holes. Um, it could be placed on a table if you want as a bit of a centerpiece. You could put cheese. It's a bit of an entertaining board at the bottom. Um, it can be used as storage. You put more wine bottles around the bottom. Um, I've made sure that the top's nice and flush, so you could put a cup on top, or you could put cups, plural. But yeah, all finished up, knocked up in two days. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. Um, from my family to yours, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.